Yeah, we're a little late getting started because, uh, yeah, everybody's driving slow because of the non-snow event uh, that we're having. Yeah, you know, you know. Bus drivers can't drive in no snow anymore? Uh, don't get me started. All right, yeah, L later, yeah. Hey, welcome, 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 welcome. Season four, episode four. Trying to count backwards is not always easy. Of Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry, that would be me. We are fueled by Gales Gas Bars. We are supported by Verge Insurance, as always. We are uh, hosted by, that's the word, that's the word I should use more often. We are hosted by a Fiddler's, a Poorhouse, down here at 149. Uh, St. Paul Street, and uh, we could do a poll. How many drinks a week do you think is healthy? Now uh, we'll get into that later, trust me. We are uh, present, uh, presented by, supported by, as also executively produced by We Stream, and we'll talk to Kevin Jack more about that later. Come on in, let's get started here. It's, uh, it's, it's a little bit on the chilly side, but uh, Snowmageddon that they have predicted for us in southern Ontario has not exactly taken place yet. So, and here in Niagara, we're always a little bit tongue in cheek when it comes with snow. Uh, gone up this morning, checked the phone. Uh, the sun is shining, there's not a flake coming down out of yonder sky. And uh, there's warnings all over the place. And oh my God, yes, all of the school buses have been canceled. Don't they train school bus drivers to drive in inclement weather anymore? Ay, ay, ay. We'll get into that a little bit off the top. But uh, Dino is going to be joining us. Yes. Uh, Dino's video went uh, viral when people were being interviewed about the new Health Canada standards for the amount you're supposed to have to drink every week. Well, we'll chat with Dino. In, uh, in a few minutes. He's a star and he will be her. That didn't quite rhyme. Uh, come on in, we'll see you in about two, eh, 60 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, now, if you watch this show on a regular basis, which we hope you do, you will remember uh, last week I made a complete ass of myself trying to put a stupid little thing in my ear. Everything today went so smoothly. I had the, uh, I, I had the professional earbud placement team come in to give me a, a hand there. Uh, and welcome to season four, episode four on this January the 25th. Boy, we've had some, we've had some pretty damn good weather so far for winter. Now, here we go, Kev. Now, and I know I'm doing this just, I want to get, I want to get you revved up. I want to get you juiced for the show. <laughs> this will do I it. I want to get that adrenaline flowing. Get the, get the kind of mojo working. Kevin Jack, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, yeah. Hey, everyone. Hi, co-founder uh, along with Brandon Scram of uh, WeStream and uh, opening act for Dino today. Yeah, <laughs> yes, Canada's premier uh, streaming company. Now, Kevin's pet peeve. Well, he has many. Yeah, because he's he has issues, but. One of those pet peeves, we won't go into all those, we'd be here for a week. But one of those is 
the process by which we cancel school transportation when inclement weather is expected. Kevin, that's your cue. Very simple, Lee. All I'm asking is tell us the night before. Don't wait until 6 a.m. the morning of to make the call. We've been hearing about, for example, just this snow event. We've been hearing about it since Monday. Not much changed. Last night, we had a post on 411 saying from the transportation services, hey, we're watching the storm but then had to find out this morning whether or not the buses were actually running. And yet today... But look at he, it well, out there. Well, look at the post here, Lee. Look at the post here from the transportation people. There we go. Buses are canceled for today. Actually, Kev, if you, if, could you pull that monitor... This is something we didn't do before. Just pull that monitor side back towards you and push it over a little bit so I can read it. We have uh, all kinds of people in my way. Just, uh, Is that our good there? Uh, yeah, it's perfect. Our fans show up and they get around the table. I mean, out of an abundance of caution. Secondary well, school exams for DSBN and Niagara Catholic boards who were scheduled for today have been postponed until tomorrow. Uh, young people's cheers can be heard all over Niagara. Buses are canceled for today. Schools are open. Today's secondary exams culminating. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, district school board oh, of sorry Niagara. then i'm looking at uh, you know here you go weather alert and weather alert weather snowfall alert snowfall warning alert. there's yeah. some from us snow's yeah. coming and then here they are last night so we continue to monitor the weather for tomorrow's snow event follow us on twitter and check our website nsts.ca for updated delay or cancellation information all right. So all I'm saying, Lee, is if they're monitoring it last night, why can't we decide at 8 p.m. the night before rather than 5.30 a.m. the morning of? It can be done. The only reason it can't be done is because people insist that that's the way we've always done it, which, of course, is the worst reason to do anything. That is absolutely true. However, Kevin, let me put some counterpoint on this for just a bit. I realize that it impacts families and parents and teachers and all like i understand there's a domino effect to canceling school buses but it is very rare that the schools are also closed i mean that's that's another level of storm that we're talking about so i'm a parent okay well i am but let I me mean, let's let's presume i'm a parent of an elementary age or high school student that normally takes the bus okay so let's say they follow your process and by 10 p.m the night before they say all buses in this particular uh school board area are not running all right perfect okay thank goodness you let me know okay and you're thinking thank yeah we can either make an arrangement to get them in by car or we can, right, now we can make keep, our arrangements. keep them home, whatever it is. So I get that. Flash forward to the next morning and we got a morning like this where my, my 10 year old could drive my car to school. But that, that, that just proves my bus. point, Lee, is that they still canceled the buses, even with the and morning And they did like cancel this. the buses. So they could but, have done that the night before. We're, we're, we're but canceling why? them now on the first flake. And if that's what you're going to do, then just look at the weather forecast, make the decision the night before. The only reason not to do it would be the possibility that the storm completely passes us by. And you know what? For the one out of 20, one out of 30 times that that actually happens, I'd much prefer a better system where we can actually plan our days the night before than all scrambling at 536 in the morning. You know who but you're going to hear from today? Today, you're going to hear the hue and cry from the teachers because the right. schools remained open. The, the two other previous events this year, the schools were closed. But today, the schools are open, which means now the teachers had to deal with the same problem that us parents have been dealing yeah, with all along, where you wake up, find out at 530 that, in the morning. What? I have to go to school today. today the and school, the, you're telling me today that the schools are inaccessible? Everything is accessible today. Anyway, Lee, that's it. You can't... You, you, there has to be a way you can tell us the night before, right. and uh, by insisting that it can't be done is just a head in the sand attitude. All in right. my honest we just, opinion. Just teach people to drive in the snow. It's pretty slippery out there. <laughs> and you know what it is? It's, it's, all because, it's all because school boards and transportation companies are afraid that a school bus 
is going to go off the road and uh, get stuck in a ditch and their little darlings are going to be inconvenienced for a little while. Oh, we wouldn't want to have that like back in my day when we used to walk to school five miles uphill and back both ways. <laughs> I know times have changed. All right, I get it. Um, coming up on the program in, oh, um, not very long from now at all. Dino, the viral video for the Welland Avenue beer store interview. Now, Dino is somewhat of a local celebrity. He is uh, Dino the DJ. He has quite a uh, pedigree here in uh, Niagara. So he's going to be joining us very, very shortly to talk about the video that's gone viral. And it's all a result of Health Canada announcing its new um, theoretical guidelines as to how much alcohol it's okay to drink over the course of the week. That it's healthy to drink, or at least not hurtfully unhealthy uh, to drink. And it comes out to, now get this, two alcoholic drinks per week. Two per week. That's whether it's two beer, because beers, by the way, beers, for those of you, for those Canadians that are watching, beers uh, is not a word. Beer is a collective noun. So there is never any need to put S on the end of the word beer. All right, that's my, that's my little Canadian alcohol consumption um, lesson for today. There is no such thing as beers. Let's go over and have some beers. No. Let's go have a few beer. Collective noun. Meaning you can use the same word as a singular as you can for a plural, and it's all collective. Okay? Please, don't say beers to me. That being said, be it uh, beers, <laughs> or scotches, or rums, or, uh, or uh, uh, wines, or whatever it is, Health Canada has said that uh, two a week is it. Now here's our pal Dino, been around Niagara a long time, kind of a household uh, name, and he happened to get stopped by CHCH outside the beers store uh, when this announcement came out by Health Canada. Here's what he had to say. What did you buy today? I bought uh, six Bush Light, six Bud Light, and I love them, tall boys. Tall boys? Uh, how much would you drink a day? Well, what day? A regular day, I don't know, maybe a couple beers, depends. Weekends, maybe, you know, five beer. Okay. Two drinks a week. What do you think of that? Well, that's just not uh, feasible, not in this country. Well, come on, man, two drinks a week, what's that going to do for you? I mean, that doesn't even get you through a day. A reasonable amount, if you're, I mean, if you're at home, you should be able to have, like, uh, four beer. That's just, uh, that ain't, that's just two more. I mean, I'll have six. But four is a fair number. But there shouldn't even be guidelines anyway. Why are you going to tell me how much I can drink at home? Well, I guess the idea is, would you be concerned that you're at a higher health risk if you're drinking too? No. That's the, the main point here is, why are they telling me what I can drink at home? What, can I have uh, two liters of pop? Can I have two liters of pop? Well, what's more healthy? Four beers or two liters of Coca-Cola? Do the math. So I'm guessing that this information about the new guidelines isn't going to change your life. It's heartbreaking and I can't even believe it. Rock and roll! <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you can't handle the tooth. You can't handle the tooth. Our pal Dino is with us. Uh, this is the, the, the Welland Avenue Beer Store viral video. Um, how you doing, Dino? Thanks for coming on. You are in great <laughs> demand these days. I you know it's been crazy, but I, I have to take exception to what you just said. You said rums. It's just rum. I know. I was making a joke, buddy. I was making a, <laughs> I was making a joke about uh, collective nouns. You said it absolutely correctly on your video when you said six beer. That's exactly correct. 
Uh, Rock so, and roll! Yeah, so all this stuff, all these things are collective uh, uh, nouns. How many gin are you going to have? You're going to have six gin. You're not going to have gin. I don't do gin. It tastes like a Christmas tree. I can't do it. Okay, well, some people like the taste of Christmas trees. But there you go. <laughs> Each to his own. So let, let's go back. How did um, CHCHTV happen to just catch you outside the Well and Beer store and do this interview with you? I just happened to be coming back from my doctor's appointment. Okay, so I get there, and uh, actually, I wanted to go to the liquor store. I wanted some vodka, but my buddy, he's going, no, I'll just have some beers today. I says, listen, all my doctor appointments are done for the Let's go and get some beer. Uh, some vodka. He goes, no, no, I'm taking you to the beer store. So we pull up to the beer store, and there's the cameras. And they were wrapping up, too. They were done. They were done. And I see the cameras, and I says, hello. <laughs> I says, what are you guys doing? And they, then they mentioned, like, I didn't know nothing about these guidelines or nothing, right? Yeah. They're like, oh, there's these two guidelines. Uh, well, Justin there, he's uh, got some plans. And I says, well, let me get in on this. And they went, well, let me see. Calls Matt over. He goes, okay, we'll do it. And then all this happened. Uh uh, why do you think you've been in so much demand? Because a lot of people are trying to get a piece of your time these days. I got to tell you, man, the biggest one so far, I was on the front page of Barstool Sports. <laughs> Bar That's big. That's when you know you've broken through the ether. Barstool Sports. Yeah. All right. And when did that happen? Yesterday. Guess what they called me? Canadian hero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, at, at, at some point in time, Dino, I'd like to think that this is the standard bearer for having made it. Niagara 411 live here is. Uh, uh, we we intend hey. we intend to overtake Barstool Sports. In, uh, in Rick, I don't, know, I don't know if you remember me, but I've been on your show many times. I I remember I remember you from days gone by. Yeah, so. Remember we did the ducks and all that stuff? Yeah. And, uh, the mystery trailer. <laughs> all right. You know, I'm all over you. So what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, I'm going to rewind a, a little bit here. Um, Health Canada and these organizations always come out with these, uh, these announcements. One day coffee is good for you. One day coffee is bad for you. Another day you can do this. And another day you can't do yeah. that. Two and a half coffees a day is fine. Then it's like, oh, you should drink as much coffee as you want because it's got blah, blah, blah in it. And then, and now we've got uh, two drinks, two drinks a week of whatever it is you're drinking. And on your video, I, I kind of giggled when you said, no. what's the point? You cut out. Oh, we froze a little bit. Yeah, it's all right. So we'll get him back here, Lee. Yeah, 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 yeah. You uh, cut out, pal. Now yeah, I know we had a couple of beer. <laughs> uh, no, it was just an internet thing. It's not coming through. Yeah, I know. We got to get you here, Dino. And, You're... I, and I, I don't disparage you on that. Maybe you had a couple of beer. <laughs> well, you know, what? keep uh, keep chatting. I'm throwing up your keep... uh, your website here because you put this together pretty quickly there. Um, and it also Your Wi-Fi sucks. <laughs> We're pretty good over here, Dino. Um, yeah. No, I don't see nothing here. Like you're just tired. All right, you know what, Dino? Why don't you uh, drop out and try reconnecting with us? It's, okay. It's not working. Yeah. Why don't yeah, you? Yeah, we know. I'll see if I can get him offline. Because reboot. They... <laughs> yeah, hold on. Reboot. 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 <laughs> when in doubt, reboot. I, I really. We'll get okay, you. Wait, right, here we go. Back. We're back now. We're All back. right. Now. Okay. There you go. All right, we've got you. Every now and then there's a glitch along the way. What I was trying to ask you... That's okay. We're in the Matrix. What? Yeah, the Matrix. What I was trying to ask you is... Um, tell us about Dino. What's your background? Why uh, uh, you've, you've got this 
Um, background. You've got, the, you've got this. You've got this regional persona. You're a celebrity here, and now people are trying to get you from all sorts of media places around the world. Who's Dino? What do you do? How did you get to where you are? You're a DJ, I know. From where? Oh, wait a second. Let me have a good look at you here for a second. You're that guy from Pervert Throw on Private Eye. <laughs> I remember you. I am not uh, from Pervert uh, Patrol. Uh, uh, I'm yeah, private. Yeah, it's Walter said Oh. Oh. oh, oh. oh shit. Oh. <laughs> Look, that one knocked the camera down. That's, 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 a, that's a low, pardon the pun, blow. Okay? Yeah. Oh. So, no, that's not, no, that's not me. Tell me, uh... Um, now you were you were privatized DJ for how long? Thirty-five years. Only thirty-five years. How does somebody manage to be a DJ and an entertainer at a Peeler Bar for thirty-five years? Well, it's actually a funny story. I'm sure it is. Tell it. Oh, it goes again. <laughs> Organizing a street fight here, Lee. Yeah, no, wait, am I still on there? Okay, yeah, no, it's starting, right. you know what happened? Are you there now? What, who's, who's fighting you for your camera? Everybody. C88s, right. Barstool Sports, they All keep right. on taking the camera. How many of those beer have you had today? I got that one. <laughs> one? You Just sure? One for now. You sure? There could be one, there could be two. The guidelines say two, but what is was uh, that's two you know, per two week, man. Now. Two per week. I know. Not and, two and in an hour. Uh, two. Hey, I, I want to hear how you how you come to be a, a, a DJ at the that's, Peeler Bar. That's what eyes we, on fifty five. Oh, this this will blow your mind. This will blow your mind. Oh God, he's lighting up a dart. Can you move the camera a gold. little bit? I'm looking at your the part in your hair, and that's all. Well, you want to hear that story? Because it's a funny story. We do want to hear that story, but we okay, want to look at well, your. That, we want to look at that beautiful face, and we can uh, handle the tooth. Wait. wait a minute. Hey, hey, did you notice? Well, no, don't take the pants off. What? Wait, wait. Did, did you notice I'm wearing the same jacket and shirt? I know. You know? Do you know why? No, I because it's an iconic look. Why? Well, because I consulted with wardrobe, and they told me to do that. Okay. It's continuity. Okay, now sit down. Where they got? Where the hell are you going? I'm go going to look for a fucking pillow. <laughs> Why do you need a pillow? We're good, Dino. We can see you right there, just Dino. Okay. okay so this All right. Okay, that better? Perfect. We love you. Now, tell us how. Uh, tell us the funny story about be getting to be a DJ uh, at uh, at Private Eyes. This is how it started. You got a few minutes? Because it's a story. That's why we're here. Okay. All right. I was uh, I was one of them there, uh, you know, foster homes, group homes, street kid in Montreal. Okay. Okay, I was living in the streets, uh, doing my thing, going nuts. I was 16 years old. Oh. Cool. <laughs> we this got you, Dino. <laughs> it's okay. actually going better than expected. Uh, yeah, yeah. We thought this might be a train wreck, but no. <laughs> okay, so then what happened was, uh, when I was young, because I have uh, I have eight brothers. I uh, wait, seven brothers and a sister. You're yeah. gonna have to stand up. Okay. I have seven brothers and a sister. Okay. And. I never met them. They were here in St. Catharines because I was born here. Okay. Okay. And then one day I came here to St. Catharines. That's perfect. Right there. Don't move. You can keep talking, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Actually, this is better if I stand up because then I can. I got this. you. We've only got till Saturday so to do this. I so I, I came to St. Catharines and uh, I walked into a bar 
because my brother was there. He oh, damn. We don't need to pause. Oh, he's what? back. Yeah, you're back. Okay, go. Okay, so 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 I moved here. I, I was AWOL from the group homes. I was living in the group homes, and I was AWOL. Okay. I came to St. Catharines because my brother, he worked as a, a cook at the embassy. Remember the embassy? I do. It's in Port Luzi? Yep. So I walk in there, and the owner there, he heard me talking French because I'm fluent in French, right? And he goes, uh, he goes, excuse me, sir. If you can talk French, maybe we get some table dancers. <laughs> I give you a job. <laughs> I go, what do you mean you give me a job? He goes, he goes you're going to be my bartender. We're going to get some uh, girls to work here from Montreal. And then it all started from there and went nuts. Because then I was just a bartender. And then the one day, uh, like for the strippers, you, they used to come in and just give a cassette, right? Yeah. They would give, give me a cassette. Okay. I put the cassette in, and they would go on the stage. I says to one day, I says, hey, there's a microphone there. Uh, can I say something? Oh, sure, Dino. You're crazy. Do something. <laughs> so I says, okay. And then before you know it, I come into work about a month later, and the boss says, no more bartender. DJ. He built me a DJ booth. And that's where it all began. In Port Luzi. Yep, Port Luzi. The embassy. We had, wow. Okay. So we go from, and, and, and a career is now born. Uh, for those, oh, yeah. for, for those people that may not know, Montreal and uh, other areas of Quebec are very well known for having uh, a, a very beautiful women that um, that and are I brought them all here. that are employed in that uh, in that in that way. So okay, so from Port to Luzi, that was years ago. How do yeah. we now? How do we now get into the thirty-five-year career or something at well, uh, Private Eyes? I, I, I had a falling out with the owners at the embassy. Let's not get into that because it's messy. That's okay. And uh, I ended up going to work at the Thorold Inn, which had one stripper a week, <laughs> and then some dude—I forget who it was—some DJ, some radio guy came to me. I think his name was, I forget his name. Anyway, he says, you shouldn't be here. He goes, go check out the Hunt Hotel in Grimsby. So I went to the Hunt Club, worked there for a few years, great place. And then years later, Stavro, he had, uh, unfortunately, he had that shooting there. Remember when the biker mm -hmm. got killed? Mm -hmm. Remember when the biker got killed? Yep. And then Stavro called me, he goes, they know. We got problems here. Maybe you come back. He said, oh, it was so funny. He goes, it's uh, the water under the bridge. Because we had a falling out, right? Oh, okay. He goes, the wa water is under the bridge. Come back to work for me. So then I went there, and uh, I've been there ever since. And you want to hear the best private eye story I have? Yes. It involves an Oscar winner. Oh yes! An Oscar winner. I I I have heard pieces of this story, but tell us the story. So I'm in there the one night, right? Yeah. Just doing it. Blah blah blah. Here comes Amber. Here comes Cinnamon. Blah blah blah. <laughs> so who walks in the bar? Who walks in the bar? I don't know. Nicholas Cage. John Lovitz and Dana Carvey. <laughs> I says, well, hello, lady. And uh, I'm telling my boss, I go, I go, I go, Stavro, these guys get to have free drinks for the entire time they're here. Like, the, the, the guy just won the Oscar. This was after um, leaving Las Vegas. Yeah. Nick Cage, Remember? yeah. Nicholas Cage won the Oscar? Yep. So anyway, he became a great friend of mine. Uh, you know what? I'll I'm bet tell you he did. One thing. 
I'm going to tell you one thing, and I hope Nicholas Cage sees this, because on that first night, he ran out of money, right? Nicholas Cage, uh, Nick to me. Of course. Uh, he, ran, he ran out of money, and I lent him $600 because he wanted to take uh, one of the girls back to the hotel. <laughs> Amber. 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 No, go, no, go, go, go. Keep talking. No. I give him the 600 bucks. I give him the 600 bucks. He fucking goes. Guess what he does the next day? He gave me back $600. I think you should have given me back like six grand or something. You know, 6,000 and, uh, some paraphernalia from leaving to Las Vegas. Something. No, you just came back and just handed me the six hundred bucks. <laughs> I felt insulted. <laughs> no, no. And you know what? what? You know what? What's his name? Dana Carvey. I know Dana Carvey. Dana yeah. Carvey came the, Dana Carvey came the first night. Yeah. And he just he just looked at me and said, "I'm never coming back here again." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why? What yeah. happened? To, what happened to Dana? Uh, he, it, it, it just wasn't his scene. But okay. John Lovitz, I could tell you a John Lovitz story, but I don't know if it's appropriate. Well, it's, it's, up, it's so funny. It's it's up to you. I don't want you to tell anything that's inappropriate. God help us. Uh, so, oh, I, no, but it's really you know, funny. That, you, you know that the movie that Nicolas Cage won that Oscar for was about a guy yeah. drinking himself to death in Las Vegas, yeah. right? Yeah. And you and he walks in and you offer him free drinks. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Grand Marnier, that's what you want. Okay, but listen to this. Listen to this. Is, this is hilarious. If we got time. So. Kevin, do we have time? I said Nick. Do we have time? Yeah, we do. Kevin says yes. Go Ask for it. Ask your producer. I did. Go for it. Hello. Tell us the You're story. You're breaking up again. Oh, I'm sorry. Tell, yeah. Go tell, ahead, Dino. Tell us a story, man. Tell us a story. All broken up. No, there we go. So, uh, Lee, what is... Yeah, okay, go ahead. We got you back. We there. got you back. Okay, so okay, I'm going to tell this story, and believe you me, it's fucking hilarious. So, I, uh, I got Nicolas Cage and John Lovitz to go to the Prince of Wales, right? So, Nick has the beautiful Amber. And uh, for John Lovett, I got this other girl, I, I, her name eludes me right now. And uh, it was pretty funny. So I said, Nicholas Cage, so they get to the hotel. And the next day, the two girls come back to the bar. And Amber, she's elated. She, like, her life has been made, right? <laughs> okay. But the other girl, she's sitting in her room. She's bawling her eyes out. Oh. I go, why? I go, what happened? She goes, well, you set me up with that John Lovitz guy. And now John Lovitz is not the most <laughs> handsome person in the world. But she goes, this is so stupid. She goes, we're sitting there, and John Lovitz just looked at me and went, fuck, are you ugly? Okay. <laughs> I go, what? <laughs> oh, no. I go, are you kidding me? I go, you're kidding me, right? She goes, no. He fucking looked at me and said, fuck it. He, like, John Lovitz was mad that I gave Nick the nice one. And and she was a good-looking girl, too. She goes, he just looked at me and said, fuck, okay. are you ugly? Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's move on to something that is a little bit more current. Uh, okay. You apparently have a video that you are going to be releasing, and you said that you were going to be announcing it on this show. Breaking news. Breaking news. And it goes... Because, it, because eventually they're going to find it, and I might as well put it out there. Okay, go for it. Well, do you have the video? Yes. We can't, you can't see it, but we'll play it. All right, here we go. Okay, you want us to play it right now? You want us to play it? You can do it. 
All right, we're playing it now. Everyone. We begin our tabloid tale from the beginning. In 1991, Buckingham Palace was shocked by the article in the National Enquirer involving sailors from the Royal Yacht. This is the article. This is how it appeared uh, in that article back in 1991. The strip club manager who sold his story, the photos too, now tells it to Western New York Live. Uh, Princess Charles Lady Diana were in Toronto, Canada. The Royal Yacht Britannia was on its farewell voyage. They were going to dock this thing, take it back to England and out of service. And I noticed that uh, Lady, Charles, uh, Lady Diana and Prince Charles were there. That night, around 7 o'clock, six young men entered the private eye complex on Highway 55, Viagra on the Lake. They came in, and I noticed that their outfits were a little uh, expensive. They were soft, plush, kind of felt or something. So I knew this was the crew of the Royal Yacht Britannia. So I, uh, I had the girls go over and start partying with these guys. And before you know it, they're there with the girls, sitting down, cavorting. And uh, I started, uh, we started having drinks with the guys and everything. I took the camera out. We snapped six pictures. Six photos were taken. Then we started uh, having Zambucas with these guys, you know, drinking, doing our party thing. Uh, one of them explained here, as it says right here, that he was... Uh, the, he had the Navy's diving insignia on his uniform. He was the diver that checks the underneath of the bombs, underneath the uh, Royal Yacht for bombs, which in 1983, then President Ronald Reagan and the Queen Elizabeth met on board the Britannia, the same ship, the same crew, right? And they had to uh, take Reagan and the Queen off the ship because eight bombs were found on the ship that day. And I had the same crew here at Private Eyes in Niagara on the Lake, cavorting and fondling the beauties at Private Eyes. <laughs> now, when I called Buckingham Palace Collect. We're talking about an hour after I had the photos in my hand. I called them Collect and all I said to the operator was, just tell them it's Niagara on the Lake, Canada, Collect. Buckingham Palace accepted the call and when they answered they, did, they said, hello. Buckingham Palace press department and I was had a little drink by now you know I was all happy because I knew what I had they wanted me to ask for money they just kept on saying well, what do you want for the pictures I, I'm going I don't want no money from you people I'm just want to make you aware that I have six photos of the crew of the Royal Yacht Britannia who I'm well aware uh, babysit Lady Di and Charles's children so these people during the day we're holding the future king of England. <laughs> and at night, private eyes. <laughs> Funny arranged a meeting with the National Enquirer. I get there, and this guy, I swear to God, he looked like Danny DeVito. Comes up to me. No, uh, should I tell the thing with the nose? That was pretty funny. So that I get in there, I tell the guy, when we meet there, I'll be with another guy, and we'll both have Toronto Blue Jays jerseys on. That's how you'll know us. We walk in. And this little guy starts doing his thing with his nose like this, like a code. I look at my brother. I says, did you just see that? My brother's nerdy. He goes, ah. he goes, Dean, don't get crazy. I says, no, that was code. So I start doing this thing where I start dancing around. Going, dee -dee -dee -dee, right? And this little guy starts going, oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Keep it down, right? So finally, after dancing around and everything, I get to the table. And I pull out, he says, can I see the pictures? So I have six, pol six Polaroids. I pull out one, I give it to him, and right away, the guy looks at it, he goes, oh my God. Takes his phone, he goes, just give me a minute. And he calls the National Enquirer. And he says, uh, he goes, yeah, yeah, it's not a hoax, it's them. And, he, and then he says a few other things, yes, yes, blah, 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 hangs up the phone. I go, what the hell is that? He goes, he goes it can always be a hoax, he goes, but, because to tell you the truth, it was my job to follow these guys around that day. He goes, and uh, that's how I know, this is them. He goes, these should be my pictures. He goes, I can't even believe this. <laughs> and meanwhile, everyone here thinks I'm crazy. They're going, Dino, what are you talking about? I'm going, believe me, the queen, Lady Di, means nothing to me. But to some people, it's big news. As you can see right here, because 50 million readers, 50 million readers, and we're on the first page. I mean, it's something, right? <laughs> well, Did we say tabloid TV? Okay, what? That is amazing. And you're, you're, you're dropping this thing for the first time ever 
now? Yeah, because because uh, no, no, it, it's out there a little bit, but because people are uh, online, they're going, wait a second, I remember this guy. So I'm just putting it out there now. Here, full disclosure. Wow. Now, how did that how did that end up ending up? How did that wrap up? You're clipping out. Okay, we'll Good say luck. goodbye. Uh, I don't want to. I, I don't want to cause you any more problems if we're clicking in and out. Dino, fabulous. No, you're here now. We're here now. Okay, thanks for being here. Uh, fascinating. We're gonna have you back. You, uh, wait, uh, you're gonna say how did that end up? Yeah, how, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. I got thousands and thousands of dollars, and it was great. Okay, so I have one more question. How many beer will you have this week? One, maybe two. According to the guidelines, I can have two by the end of the week. But I'll have four, maybe six. For the week? It's up to me. (laughs) Because I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to tell you one thing. Everyone on the comment sections and everything, uh, a lot of people are saying, well, these are only guidelines. These are only guidelines. Right. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm a Canadian, and I've seen it happen a million times. Guidelines eventually become law. That's how they do it. They'll get you. They'll hit you on your insurance, on your whatever. Mm-hmm. So take your guidelines and that. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I hear what you're saying. Dino, uh, always a blast. Have yourself a fabulous day. And uh, just hide your car keys. That's all I got to say. I don't drive. Good. Perfect. It's a, it's that, a match made in heaven. <laughs> that's, my gift, my, that's my gift to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dino, thank you, mate. Um, wow. What a what a story! What a collection of stories! What a character, and uh, just uh, like like the phoenix rising out of the ashes, Dino's back. He's back. Lee, I feel like that was uh, both the best and worst thing I've ever done <laughs> on this show or yeah. ever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you know what they say: the internet. Uh, is not uh, is not regulated and uh, after that it's probably a good thing i mean that guy's been hit up by every media outlet though was telling me he was doing uh, you know morning radio in vancouver all the way out to the Maritimes. nobody's had nobody's had this nobody's had this interview no this was the first time he's done anything on camera since the chch interview we didn't yeah. even find out when that actually happened it was like last thursday friday yeah it was about a week ago the I thing came I saw out it for but the, the first time over but, the weekend but but the but the uh, the crew of the Royal Britannia being at private eyes, I don't think anybody's ever seen that. Well, other than when it aired there on whatever the news show was back in 1991. Yeah, like, pfft, long gone. I think the only one with the tape is probably Dino. Man. And that was in the U.S. I think it was just I, one of the Buffalo stations. Yeah. <laughs> Channel 7 or what have you. That's what it looked like to me. Oh, um, my God. Lee, the, uh, the show must roll on. And I guess it does. There's no real transition, so I'll just throw it up here because a, a good friend of the program is, is set to join us. Gil Beaulieu. Um, back, in the, back in the early days of the, the theory of putting the show together, Kevin had, we had, um, we had a platform live stream Niagara, which was on. Uh, Facebook page live stream Niagara and it was a collection of various talents that uh, had regular appearances on on the on Facebook this was one of them another one of them was uh, was a local magician by the name of Gil Bouillot and uh, this is a guy that is just really 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 dedicated to his craft and he loves uh, teaching it, he, he loves being around it, um, and you'll you'll see that uh, the Ontario Children's Magic Academy poster in the background. It's a it, it's it's been a lifelong passion of Gil and uh, Gil. It's been a while since we've seen you. Welcome to the show. 
Hey, Lee, how are you doing? I am doing really, really well. You at home or in your uh, magic office right now? Uh, uh, basically, I'm at home. Um, the reason why the banner is behind me is if I took that down, you'd be looking right into my kitchen sink. Oh, why? Have you got dirty dishes in there or something? I, I would have to go check. I've been busy getting ready for today. You should be <laughs> able to clean them by magic, Gil. Oh, I wish I could. Some <laughs> things magic just doesn't do. It doesn't create money for me either unless I work for it, just like everyone else. Well, it's it's absolutely uh, fabulous to see you again because it's been a while since we've uh, connected. Tell us what's Tell us what's going on in your world right now. Uh, it's getting really exciting uh, now that uh, the restrictions are gone and uh, the three hard years of COVID are now that pause of life is getting behind us. Um, I finally found a place to start teaching again. It's the All Saints Anglican Church in Dane City on Forks Road. Wow. So okay. I've come to agreement with them. Yeah. So I can I have a venue to teach now. Um, we have classes upcoming starting on February 14th. So you can uh, go to uh, the Ontario Children's Magic Academy website. And uh, we worked on that over COVID a whole lot and redid the whole thing. And you can register there. You can register and pay online or any way you want. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's just exciting to get back into having hands on with the kids again, um, which is one thing I've really missed over COVID. Um, even that. performing, it was, you know, you didn't do much of that either. Right. But uh, the, the whole teaching thing was, you know, we did some online and viral stuff just like every other platform did. And now it's, you know, let's get back and get our kids interactive and having fun and back yeah. to uh, being kids. So uh, it's called the Purple Wand Course. It's, yes. eight, it's, it's eight weeks. And um, what do, walk us through a little bit of of what the what the kids will experience over the over the eight weeks it sounds a little bit like harry potterism in a way almost yeah. almost it, it's uh it, it's kind of like uh going to hogwarts except uh, you don't have to uh wear the uniform or the robes <laughs> or anything like that uh basically we teach a life skills course to kids and it's eight lessons and every lesson has a certain trait the first lesson is respectful and then we move on throughout. Every lesson has a trait, has a character associated with it, authentic giving, being creative. Right. And every lesson works on that trait and the tricks for that trait go with the lesson. So they're learning these skills. And this is something that the kids have really missed um, over the last while is just interacting in person once again. Um, they've that's been missed, they've needed it, they're missing out on some of those skills over the last three years that they've needed to build. Um, we deal with kids seven to 12, and uh, they'll, they'll learn a magic trick, um, usually two. There's a bonus one in every lesson that they can go online and learn on their own and bring to the next lesson. And away we go, and then we play games that are associated with, you know, just having fun with some of that trait that we're trying to, you know, like, interact with on that yeah. particular um, lesson so how and every lesson is geared to that. when uh, when someone learns um, a magic trick correct me if I'm wrong but it's not just learning the nuts and bolts of it it is the practice to make it appear to be smooth and effortless and appear like magic right Big time, yeah. That's we always iterate. It's practice, practice, practice. So, so when when somebody joins up, when when uh, somebody's child or or a kid comes in and says, "Hey, I want to I want to learn how to be a, a a magician," and I realize this is be a starting place a place because it's like a lifelong passion, as you know, that takes you forward. How how much do you expect them to practice, or do they have to show you the next week how they did, or do they get marked on it? How does that work? Yeah, uh, we, we we don't mark on anything. Uh, you know, okay. like our our philosophy in Discover Magic is to you know um, be your best as one of them, and think of others. And the first rule of magic is to have fun. So they can go back home and 
they're naturally they're naturally going to practice because they're going to want to show it to their parents. They're going to want to show it to grandma, grandpa, go to school, show it sure. to the teacher and the kids. So that becomes almost second nature to them. They aren't even thinking that they're practicing. They'll go home, do it three, four times, and most of them are designed that you can pick up pretty easily because they're for kids, seven to twelve. Yeah. So they go to that. And even in class, we have what we call power practice. So we'll practice with the kids practicing off of each other. Right. And we switch them up and they practice again. So they even get that practice in the lesson. And then they come back and we see how they do. But, you know, the next lesson is now geared to moving on and finding more fun and more magic to interact with. All right. Um, I got a bunch of questions, but uh, can you do something for us now? Have you got a... Have you, have, you, have you got a trick or a sleight of hand or something that you can show us? Sure, sure. Uh, l l let's do uh, something that uh, we actually uh, use in one of our courses. All right. I brought out here, it's basically a piece of string with a wooden building block on it. I'm right. just going to move back a little bit here so you can see it moves back and forth. So yeah. We just took a piece of string, drilled a hole in our building block, and we put it on that string. All right. What's really amazing is if you just stare at it just for a second here, Lee. Yeah. You're I'm actually going to help me cause the magic. Okay, I'm staring. Because you are actually going to keep looking at this building block. I'm staring. As I turn myself sideways. Mm -hmm. And you will see that it's just staying there in the center. Yeah. It's now stuck. It's Can you now ask stuck. it to move? It's stuck. Yes. Now I want you to ask it to move. Tell it to move. Uh, Tell building, the block to move. Bu uh, building block move. And here we go. Take a look. And let's tell it oh, to Oh, and it doesn't even just fall. It kind of walks and, down there. And we just let it go. And if we want to, we can bring it all the way to one end here, Lee. All right. Well, let's bring it all the way up to the top. Look at that. Now it is there. It is stuck. It is staying. And it's let's stuck bring again. it all the way down to the bottom together. Here we go. Okay. Oh, now it's turn. It, all right. And let's tell it to stop. Stop. And it stops. Okay. And then we just have to blow on it, and we let it just drop on its own. And what's really amazing is kids can pick that one up nice and fast. It's dealing with things that kids can relate to. It's not complicated. It's a building block from Toys R Us and a piece of string. Um, do they get a magic wand? They do. At the oh, end of every okay. course, we have a graduation certificate, and we have a magic wand that goes with it. I'm just going to bring out a little tray that I have that has all of our wands on them. Wonderful. We have four colored courses that go from purple, green, orange, and blue, and then every presenter comes up with the own, their own way of wanting to have one of their students graduate into the ultimate, the black wand. All right. Like the black belt of uh, martial arts is the black wand. It's exactly what it was magic. based on, Lee, to be compatible with people understand the colored belts in martial arts. But we don't use a gi or a belt. We have magic wands because it's magic. Mm. I teach magic. I uh, do. It's one of my favorite things to do. One of our... We just had our conference a couple of weeks ago down in Orlando, Florida. Yeah. One of the things that they asked us no. to concentrate on is we're now seven years into the program for some of us who started right at the beginning. I'm one of the original 52 that actually started. And if you want to know how they came up with the number 52, okay. it's how many cards are in a deck of cards. Ah, uh, okay. All right. So now, it has that tie into there. And they asked us, you know, like, you know, how, how has magic teached your life? You know, changed your life. <laughs> How has teaching magic changed your life? And what do you actually want to get out of What's your primary aim, which is one of our challenges to take back yeah. as we left the conference, as to what do you want to do? It's with kind of this my program? question, too. Where yeah. do you want to take it? And? And you're asking me how it changed my yeah, life? Yeah, your answer is? My answer is a whole lot. That's, that's the very simple answer. Uh, the complicated answer goes into, I started when I was a kid, and I wish this program was around when I was a kid. I wasn't the most athletic in my family, and I come from a family of, like, Olympians. So it's like, <laughs> okay. they, 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 they were good. I, I was not. 
And then I found magic. And I started to get good at something other people weren't. And now I that must have been that must have been really uplifting here. for you. It was. Um, it built up a whole lot of confidence when I was going into uh, finishing elementary, going into high school, and just all through life, you know, like getting up in front of people and performing. And then when I found this program seven years ago, um, to pass okay. it on to today's generation in a generation where, you know, like we call our teenagers screenagers because they're always looking and attached to a phone, um, an iPad, a right. laptop. And magic, you, you can't be associated to a screen. You have to talk to the person. You got to get them to do something. It's a so one on one. It's, 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 I integrated you into what was happening. Yeah, it's it's a one on one, very personal experience. Okay, now, Gil, let me move on a little bit. Um, you have uh, acquired status whereby you have been uh, awarded the, um, I guess it would be like the magic's equivalent of um, of the Masters Golf Tournament green jacket. You've got a, you've, you've acquired a level of expertise and recognition in your, in your, in your line of work. So what, tell us about this and then we want to see you put it on. Okay, well, this was one of our challenges. I, I haven't earned it yet, but right as we're doing this, Lee, I am earning it. The challenge was to go back home and find a media source that you can talk about our programs with. Yeah. And then, and only then, once you've completed that challenge, you can put your jacket on. And it was on the honor system. And the only time I've put this on was when I was at the conference, we put it on to see if it would fit. <laughs> and then we were told to take them off. Okay. And you can't put it on until you've completed the challenge. Okay. All right. So how are we going to do this? Uh, we're going to see the jacket go on. We're going to do it right now. We're going to do it right here. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I am going to disappear from here and in a short while leave, oh, you're I am coming going in to here. magically okay. appear in the, you in the, uh, in, in, By the magic of the media, you are going to join us right here at Fiddler's Poor House. I didn't know whether the, th whether the plan had changed or not. Because uh, you magicians always befuddle me. I, I, I never know what's going on. So, uh, well, I'm going to come and befuddle you some more. Okay. We, looked, we will look forward to being befuddled. So we'll say goodbye for now uh, and uh, bring the jacket and we'll, we'll do it uh, uh, magically live here at Fiddler's. All right? That we will. All right. See you in a bit. Kevin, you keep me on, your, on my toes here. Lots of stuff happening today on the My program. My goodness gracious me, this is uh, this is a potpourri of uh, streaming magic. Pardon the pun. Let me thank Gales Gaspars Limited for uh, again fueling this program. And this is another fabulous program. I don't know if you saw last week's or not, but it was a very moving, uh, very um, very impactful uh, program. That, uh, that we did last week. We're very proud of it, and we thank all the people that participated in it, as well as our sponsors that are participating again in this week's program, which is also pretty damn good so far, as far as I can tell. Gales Gas Bars Limited, Niagara's Living Wage Employer. Thank you for joining us. I was going to say, Lee, watch your language with that, but at this point, like, who cares? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've kind of blown that out of the water. Uh, also, also uh, Rainbow Registered is Gail's uh, 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 Rainbow uh, Citizen Friendly. Yeah, they're Rainbow Registered Business. Ages. Which like everything, new... everything is safe. Everybody's safe. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's welcome uh, from, uh, from all walks of life and stripes, as they say. Verge Insurance Group, thank you very much. Mark Shirk, uh, Blake Shirk, uh, all of your, uh, folks. And, uh, I do look forward to getting you on the program. You've been kind of hard to track down and get a hold of, but we will get you. We will find you. But, uh, in the meantime, Niagarans, make sure you find them for all your insurance needs. Kevin Jack, uh, we did not have a chance to talk to you too much last week during uh, the program with regard to WeStream. 
um, co-founded by Kevin, as well as Brandon Scram, and um, you've been, you're ramped up once again in city councils and regional councils and all that stuff that's Absolutely. that's going on. Yeah, last but time, you've got weddings coming out of the woodwork now? Yeah, and, we're being approached for a wedding to do combo with uh, Niagara Parks and the Hilton Hotel in, uh, in March, so that's cool. Um, and this Sunday, Lee, yes. we are going to be streaming live the induction ceremony into the Niagara Falls Sports Wall of Fame. I believe COVID put this off for maybe one or two years. So mm -hmm. I think we have either a double or a triple cohort this year. Okay. 14 nominees being inducted, being enshrined in the Sports Walk of Fame, in, uh, or the Wall of Fame, rather, in Niagara Falls. So you can see that. I believe we are live 2 p.m. on Sunday from the Gale Center. But, of course, you don't have to be there because you can watch it. On YouTube, just look for the City of Niagara Falls YouTube channel. So just one of the many things right. that we do around town. Now, <clears throat> clarify that for me. On the YouTube channel, the Niagara Falls YouTube channel, of course, everybody get, knows how to get to uh, YouTube. Does that also stream if they go to the WeStream Facebook page? Is it also stream there? Or Generally not. A are lot there of, other areas? A lot of times we like to just make other people look good. And in this case, <laughs> we're going to make the city of Niagara Falls, and all of their inductees look really good on Sunday. So just, you know, find the city of Niagara Falls, find their YouTube channel. It'll be live as of 2 p.m., if not a couple minutes before. But thank you very much for that, Lee. Okay, well, every week you try to make me look good. I'm your only failure so far. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you want to touch on here? We've got Mendelt coming wow. up in about 10 minutes. Yeah, talk about that. Let's talk about what that is so that we, so that people can see this. So Mendelt is the conductor of Momentum Choir. Mendel Moment Hextra. Momentum Choir is something that uh, I fell in love with the very first time I met them, the very yeah. first time I heard them, and the very first time I heard of them. It is a, um, a I'll use the air quotes, a professional adult choir comprised of developmentally delayed individuals. Mm hmm and for all of the people in the choir, this is absolutely their passion. This is their outlet. This is everything they look forward to on a given week is the practice and the rehearsal and getting back with people. And speaking of getting back with people, we help Mendel and Momentum out throughout COVID with a lot of virtual events and what have you. But finally, they're back in person this Sunday at the Performing Arts Center in St. Catharines, just, just down, down the road the from us. Yeah. And Mendel has partnered with Nick and Niagara 411 and if you use Niagara 411 as a discount code, you'll save $4.11 off a price of admission. If I wasn't... Which you do online? You do online. And I know Mendel will give us all the details. Um, you know what? Go and see them. But I'd say more importantly, if you're a business in or a business owner in Niagara and you're looking for an organization to throw your might behind to mm -hmm. support, I can't think of a more deserving body then Momentum Choir. I know you've been a supporter of theirs for uh, many years now. And, and a, worth, uh, a more worthwhile endeavor I don't think I could imagine. And what always, what always strikes me when I see this group perform is the ultimate joy on, on the faces uh, of the people that are involved, of the of the singers, I mean, they they just they're just so proud of where they are, and they're just so emotionally attached to what they're doing, and they're actually going to. We're going to talk to uh, Manel today, of course, but also, as you know, we have a musical act that plays us off the stage every week when this show is complete. And they, of course, are a natural to finish off today's show. And they're going to be doing a, a very, uh, um, very appropriate song. Uh, one, of the, one of the world's and history's wonderful songwriters and singers passed away over the last month. And her name was Christine McVie, and she was with the band Fleetwood Mac. And they're going to be doing a song that she wrote and sang uh, in called Don't Stop. So um, we're looking forward to the Momentum Choir's performance of Don't Stop to play us off the stage today. Absolutely. Now, Lee, we may want to check. I mean, with all the inclement weather, there's a lot of stuff happening around Niagara right now. So um, maybe just peek in on that for a second. Does that work for you? Sure. 
And just uh, let's just see, because I know Nick's been busy. He's been Kevin. I'm so easy. Just don't let it get out. I mean, okay. Here's a Good Samaritan thing, but right now I'm more. In, and I, I love all those stories, but more interested in uh, in the roads and the road conditions. Yeah, we uh, and emergency services responding to a vehicle into a house uh, in the area of St. Lawrence Avenue, Niagara Falls downtown. Um, is it that? Is it that slippery that? Uh, a car would have gone into a house? Yeah, it can get quite slippery, Lee. I mean, on my drive-in... I can't you know, see you behind me, but what does it look like outside? It, it, it's snowing pretty good. It's, snow, yeah. it's, it's been pretty constant since it began at about, what, 8.30, 9 a.m. Yeah, this but it morning? was sloppy. It didn't seem like it was freezing, but anyway. Yeah, let's go down a few more, because I know there's... Uh, Day 40 Erie SPCA, yeah. there's us. I mean, there you go. Just past 7th Street. You just scrolled through us, Kevin. I know. <laughs> QW, uh, QW uh, Toronto Bowett, just west of 7th Street in St. Catharines. We have had a lot of collisions in that area. A lot of transport trucks, a lot of big accidents have closed our highway down. Uh, injuries possible, OPP responding. But I don't understand. One of these times we're going to get Carrie Schmidt on here from the OPP. Uh, and I want to know why we've got so many big rig uh, and highway closing accidents on our highways because it doesn't seem we haven't had that bad a winter uh, 358 Niagara Street and Welland motor vehicle collision uh, viral video sensation Dino oh, joined us earlier there's a little promo there no promo for us. that's the that's the original piece that we saw from CHCH <laughs> you can't handle the tooth yeah, did you see at a at his own Etsy shop? I mean, I was throwing it out there, but I mean that that interview was a was a little all over the place to say the least. But he already has an Etsy shop. Dino tells me that he is a graphic designer, so I think he came up with those himself, and he's selling T-shirts and mugs with uh, with "You can't handle the tooth" and uh, "You do the math." <laughs> you so do those the are, math. I mean, those are the two catchphrases that are coming out of that viral video. So, but these, it's it's amazing how some of these reports have legs and then others just die on the vine. What reasonable Canadian would think that someone is all of a sudden going to alter their lifestyle because they issued a report saying, well, we've now determined that if you really want to maximize your health and yet enjoy your pastime of consuming alcohol, the safe level is two drinks per week. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to sit down with my wife over a dinner and say, wow, how are we going to... How are we going to apportion those two drinks that we now are going to have? Considering we've already had two today, when can we have our next one? Are people really going to do this? No! <laughs> it's absolutely ludicrous. If you're either going to you're either going to drink nothing uh, or you're going to drink more than two drinks a, a week. Yeah, but Lee, what about two liters of pop? Two yeah, liters, two of, liters pop. of pop. I couldn't. Ah, I ah, couldn't ah, drink ah. two liters of pop a, day, a week. I don't. I. I, I don't like. A day. You knew he was lying, though, right? When he said, "You know, I might have six beer." Yeah. <laughs> and we haven't even got into the beers versus beer debate. That's for another day. Yeah. For another day. Oh um, no, he told me. He told me. I. I think. Uh, I think Dino and I are very simpatico on that because. Uh, I was making fun talking about rums and gins and stuff. He says, it's not rums, it's rum. I said, yeah, 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 I had two rum. That's correct. That's absolutely correct. So, if anything, Dino at least has his grammar down. Here's a couple more, Lee. One that I find in, uh, in baseball vernacular okay. is whether or not to pluralize RBIs. Because it's runs batted in. It is. It sounds weird when he says he had seven RBI. Yeah. I, no, I guess that's what you should say. But that's say. what you should say. I know, but, it's but like, we don't. It's like uh, if you have two, uh, how, if you've got a mother-in-law and a mother-in-law, how do you pluralize? I have two mother-in-laws. Wrong. 
mothers in law. Mothers in law. Uh, now, how about this one, Lee? Uh, at my parents' place for Christmas, they had um, two deer ornaments. You know the illuminated deer ornaments that yeah. you would put out on the front lawn. Yeah. There were two of them, and I had to go remove them from the front lawn. Okay. Did I go remove two deer, or did I remove two deer? You removed two deer. But they're not deer. It's an inanimate object. It just happens that I'm describing it you as a deer. You removed two statues of deer. Of deers. Well, two statues of deers, but are they the no, statue of No, two statues of deer. Well, two statues of deer. But There's no such thing as deers. But if they're an inanimate object, I'm just... doesn't matter. Inanimate or animate. It doesn't matter. They're still not. They're still not plural. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, here, let's let's get to uh, momentum, Lee. Okay. <laughs> is Mendelt with us? Okay, Mendelt Hexter's with us. He's the. Uh, uh, do we call this uh, uh, choir master? Well, why don't you? Uh, why don't we ask him? Okay. Well, there he is. Uh, Mendelt, uh, happy to see you again. It's been a while. How you doing? Good to see you, Lee. And I will. Um Make sure that my grammar is um, up to you, up to snuff today. Well, it better be, boy. We've got we got the grammar police out here, uh, yes, for sure. Um, so, uh, Mendel, thank you so much. What, what is your official title? Choir director, uh, conductor. Uh, what what do we dub you as? Uh, well, with a name like Mendel, I respond to mostly. Uh, everything, but uh, my official title is Executive and Artistic Director. There we go, Executive and Artistic Director of Momentum Choir. How many years have you been doing this now? Uh, Lee, um, I'm thankful to say that I'm the founder of the choir. We I know, I in, know. How uh, many years? How many years? We're celebrating our 15th year this season. Awesome. Congratulations on that. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Remind, uh, remind us, and for people that might not um, know your DNA, um, how, how you did create this, how, how the founding uh, of the Momentum Choir took place. Sure. Great question. So I was working as a music therapist, um, and I was traveling from one end of the Niagara region going to the other end of the Niagara region. I started in Port Colborne and I was supporting a, a young lady named Teresa who could sing Elton John better than Elton John. She's just, <laughs> she was just a phenomenal yeah. singer. And I was going to Grimsby to support someone who could sing Billy Joel in just an amazing, entertaining, wonderful way. And as I'm hitting that um, QW, I say to myself, there's no, there's no stage, there's no, um, there's no platform, there's no organization for right. people who live with a disability, who want to work on this craft, who love singing, who love working on their art, uh, and myself and um, an organization called Bethesda Community Services, we put a uh, we put an application into the Ontario Trillium Foundation for a three-year grant to start the choir. Mm -hmm. uh, we received that in 2007, and then since 2010, we've been uh, running it ourselves by wonderful support like you and Niagara 411 and WeStream and so many of the other organizations. And uh, what, is the, what is the turnover in, in the choir? How many people come and go over over the course of uh, any given year, or is or is it a pretty stable group that you have? Uh, the turnover is very very little. Um, the majority of our turnover uh, comes from people moving out of uh, out of the city, okay. out of Saint Cat. However, we fix that now, Lee, because we have um, Niagara. We have momentum here in Niagara. We have a momentum choir in Hamilton. Wow. We have a momentum choir in Western New York, and since when COVID hit us, we came up with a, this idea of momentum without borders. So we have a virtual choir, and that's open to anybody all over Ontario, and we rehearse once a week uh, online, and then what those folks can do because they're too far away from mm -hmm. uh, coming from a weekly coming to a weekly rehearsal. 
they can still practice all the tunes, rehearse all the songs that we're singing, and they can come to our big shows. So, for instance, we're going to have lots of people who are, um, you know, hours away from driving to Hamilton or Niagara who will be on stage uh, on Sunday afternoon. Oh, that's fascinating. And congratulations on that expansion. That's just absolutely, absolutely wonderful. And the bulk of the funding is public funding? Do you get any private uh, grants or um, I guess I can we can interchange private and public but what I'm asking you is it all from sort of citizens or do you get some grants from government? Uh, we, we don't get um, consistent grants for, from government. Um, the last grant we received was um, uh, from the government was the Ontario Treatment Foundation. We've, yeah. we've received a grant from the wonderful people at the United Way. Um, but basically, Lee, we, um, we depend on private donations, corporate donations, uh, and, and ticket sales. So that's why we're so excited that we're back on because we haven't been on stage yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for three years. So what, and, uh, what, what would be, uh, we'll, we'll get back to the joy of the performance in, in a bit, but and people will want to know is, wow, something that we just saw on the screen, you didn't see it, but we saw a portion of one of the performances. It's a, it's a big event, it's professionally done. Um, professionally conducted and organized and arranged and people are saying to themselves wow this this isn't free so uh, and I mean the bands are terrific and the setup is nice and the stages and all the singers what would what I'm leading up to here sorry is how much does it cost to operate the momentum choir every year What's your what's your nut every year that you've got to you got to fund? Yeah, so so for instance, this year our operating budget is just around a hundred thousand. Is that all? I mean, it, I know it's a lot. I know a hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, but it seems like it could be more. Uh, well, we're we're we have a couple of grants out right now, and uh, and we have some ideas to expand this. Uh, this concept and this organization across the country. That's wow. what uh, that's what we want to do. It's my it's my personal opinion uh, that uh, a community isn't whole unless every voice is heard, and the 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 joy and the the stories and the the growth in people that I've seen who have come into momentum right. to choir. I want every I want every or every community across this country to. Um, to provide that opportunity for their, for their people. Wonderful. All right, tell us about Sunday now. Give us all the details uh, about Sunday. We are at the First Ontario Performing Arts, like you said, right down the street, uh, 250 St. Paul Street. The show is at on Sunday, January 29 at 4 p.m. It's gonna be rocking. We've been working on these tunes for a couple of years now. And we've got an amazing 12-piece band behind us, and it's going to be all the all your favorite tunes. We got um, we're going to do celebration. We're going to do some uh, Cindy Lauper. We're going to do some CCR. Uh, we're going to do some We Are Family. It's going to be amazing. You will you will sit in that seat, and you will be. Uh, so happy that you are there instead of anywhere else. Awesome. And how do we get tickets? Give us that. Go to the uh, First Ontario Performing Arts Centre website, firstontariopac.ca, and you'll see us right on there. And grab a ticket, bring a friend, and enjoy the show. And there's, a, and there's a discount available too, as we have up on our screen, there is an alert here. If When you're online at the Performing Arts Center site, uh, and if you use the code Niagara411 uh, at the box office, or can you do this on site as well? You, you, you can do it on site. I'm hoping that we're sold out before Sunday, yeah. uh, which was the case when we were at the Performing Arts Center. The, yeah. Uh, the last time, right. but yeah, big thanks to Nick and Niagara 411. So um, they've partnered with us, including as well as WeStream. So we have, um, yeah, we put a, a discount code 411 
Niagara 411, get four bucks and 11 cents off. And that's off, uh, and, the, and uh, you can do that online. What is the, what is the price of a ticket? So there's, um, there's tiered pricing. There's uh, $20 is the regular ticket, um, $15 for a senior, and $10 if you are a supported individual. Oh, my gosh. What, a, what an absolutely uh, wonderful deal for some great entertainment. That's, uh, that's terrific. So it's uh, is this Sunday, 4 o'clock, right? That's right. Okay. Um, uh, Mendel, as always... We are amazed by your community spirit and what you've done over the years and how this has uh, expanded and, and entertained us and kept these people so happy for, for so long. And as I mentioned to Kevin before we brought you on, when you're watching the Momentum Choir perform, uh, and back in the day when we did some talk radio, we've had a couple of them in the studio and they, they've done some singing for us. And it's just, they, they do so with such joy. They just absolutely adore what they're doing. So kudos to you and all the people that have anything to do with this. It's, uh, it truly is wonderful. Thanks so much, Lee. And you're so right. When, when the music starts, the disability takes a backseat and just the joy of humanity shines. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we look forward to hearing their version or your version of Don't Stop, Fleetwood Mac's big hit. Um, at the end of the program, so we'll be we'll be playing your your cruise song at the end of the show. Thanks so much, Lee. Thanks, Kevin. Have a good time on Sunday, mate. Okay, Thanks. all right, Kevin. One of Niagara's successes, that's for sure. And I am uh, I'm really happy that you and uh, and your company hitched your wagon to their to their wagon train years ago because what it must make you uh, feel really good that you you picked a winner i mean you picked something that really makes you feel good doing that myself off here it's it's just something that you can't help but get behind and yeah. it's it's so much more than just the people in the choirs because it's all of their families too and when you can bring some joy to them, when you can help out in whatever little way. So for WeStream, the way we would help out over the years is we would stream for free their gala concerts. Mm -hmm. And that brought it to family and friends beyond just Niagara. Um, and I know for other companies, like I said, I, I can't think of a better institution in Niagara. If you're looking to throw money somewhere and support people... Absolutely. I mean, you, you just see the joy that it brings the well, people you see in the how, their families. It's, you see how well it's used. It's second to none. Right on the right on. And, the and I love I love the fact that it was born right here in Niagara, and now it is growing organically. Yeah. Now that they've been able to expand into into the United States, and, and it's I mean, awesome. Mendel's not forcing this into communities. Communities are asking for it. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's um, and, and you know what? As a company, we do a lot of work with um. um Oh, gosh. Uh, Community Living Ontario. Yes. We've done work with that organization over the years, and we're very proud to support Momentum Choir, and I will continue to support them in any way that I can, um, you know, while I'm, while I'm still on this earth. But, I mean, it is just growing organically, if you know what I mean. Like, I like do. People want this. Yeah. People want this. So, so cool. Okay. Uh, have, we, uh, have we had magic enter the room? We have. So, here, let's see. I'll just leave uh, my, you know what, so. I'll, throw up, I'll throw up Gills here. Okay. The, uh, so people know who we're talking Cause about. Because thing, thing, things are happening behind my back, and uh, I, I like magicians, but uh, the, when the world of wands starts uh, enveloping me, I can get a little nervous. I've read all seven. I've Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's a magician behind me. We can see him on the screen. I have read all seven of the Harry Potter books, and they all frighten me. But... Um, here we go. What we ha what we have here now, Gil. Um, you can can you hear me talking? Yes, I can. Hi. All right. All right. Hi. Welcome. Welcome back to the show. So hey, you've thank you've you. you've been magically transported here to um, 149 St. Paul Street uh, at Fiddler's Poorhouse. Explain to me again what the significance of this piece of apparel, what this jacket that you brought with you is explain the significance okay so back at our conference a couple weeks ago the discover magic umbrella group who puts it on 
challenged every presenter in attendance yep. who received this jacket, and you had to be in attendance to do this challenge and get right. the jacket. Go find a media outlet, promote your next class or your program, or just get some media exposure. And this is called Earning Our Media Challenge Jacket. So I have not been allowed to put it on other than to try okay. it on once at the conference okay. for fitting. So this is it. And at the conference, they, um, this is going to make our founder very happy, one of them. He handed out train whistles. So every time we complete one that, of our challenges, we get to toot our own horn <laughs> and use the train whistle that he designed for all of us personally. That's a train attend. whistle? It's a train whistle. What does it sound like? Blow it. <laughs> that is a train whistle. It's a train whistle. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and our good friend Kevin, um, we came up with this game. He's going to do the honors. He's helped me so much. Instead of me okay. actually putting it on, I'm going to let this is guy this this is this our version us. of uh, the Masters Butler Cabin. Kevin Jack. Well, you got to help him out a little bit. Stick your arms out there. There you go, um, Kevin Jack. Co-founder of We Street. Yay! A, 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 a resounding clatter of, uh, of applause. Now, if, <laughs> if, if your founding fathers uh, do not appreciate the media exposure you got with this, uh, if you've got to win the, the, the jacket prize. Because, I mean, we get upwards of 30, 40, 50,000 views on this show every week so i don't know how many of your magician friends get that kind of media exposure but if anybody's earned the jacket you have i i, I agree um i think i don't know how many exactly so far earned it since the conference but i think it's under 10 at the moment i might right. be the fifth or sixth one and I, I i just loved having this moment with the train whistle with you guys no, and for, i think you're for all of them too I think you're I think you're leading the pack and it was really cool because not that many weeks ago um, um, uh, my wife and I were standing on uh, on the Hogwarts Express train platform in uh, in London we were there wonderful yeah I didn't see you though but you were probably there too I just didn't see you hiding in the shadows on you <laughs> all right thanks Gil Bilyeu. Um uh, magician uh, extraordinaire and uh, just a just a great teacher of our children and uh, enthusiastic about what he does thank you very much Gil um, we're gonna go out with this story while Kevin gets us uh, sorted out before the um, the momentum choir comes in during the lockdown at Garrison Road I, I, I'm assuming you heard the story if you didn't just um, bear with us during the lockdown at Garrison Road Public School, our daughter could not leave the school as there was a stay-in-place order. Therefore, all students were to be picked up when safe. I was working at the hospital out of town with, only, with the only car we had available when the call came in. I took the chance to see if the car was done that was closer to home so my husband could go get her. I called Rob at Deals on Wheels, and he and his employee drove our car to my home immediately without a blink. I wanted to thank him for being so quick and not hesitating to help us out. Rob has been our mechanic for over 10 years now and willing to help at any time he can. It was a great help to know my husband was able to get our daughter in a timely manner after this horrible moment. Thanks, Rob. And that's how communities uh, stick together. I'm not exactly sure what, uh, I, I guess they found no, no th serious threat, but there was a threat that there was. Yeah, I mean, no, I guess I'd say no credible threat. No credible threat. But yeah. it was definitely serious and they, and they reacted. There was a call in that there was, uh, there was a, uh, like a gun threat or something around the yeah. school. So yeah. they're, they're, they're conducting their investigation. Right. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dino, the viral DJ, uh, for, uh, uh, for joining us uh, today. I can't describe the interview, so if you didn't see it, just go back and, and catch it, and you'll see why I can't describe it. It's just uh, one, of the, one of those stories that just, uh, speaking of or, or growing organically, <laughs> that, that one sure did. 
Uh, and of course, Gil Billio, um, Magic by Gil. Uh, congratulations to him for his accomplishments. Glad to have him back in the fray. And uh, it was a fun, fun chat to have him with us today. And uh, to Mendel Hextra, um, artistic director of the uh, Momentum Choir, make sure you take in their show on uh, Sunday at the Performing Arts Center because they are awesome. And they're going to they're gonna sing us out uh, with Don't Stop by Fleetwood Mac, which is very appropriate since we lost its author and songstress Christine McVie over the past month. So looking forward to hearing Moment and Choir's version of that. Kevin Jack, as always, um, a pleasure working with you. You're the best. Uh, and uh, give my best to Brandon as well. We stream, ladies and gentlemen, if you need anything streamed that uh, looks even half as good as this, <laughs> by all means, get in touch with, uh, with Restream uh, episode. Now, we have, uh, we, we are taking a break. Uh, we are going on hiatus for about three weeks, Kevin? Yeah, I think so. So we will be back in February. Uh, we have some fabulous opportunities that we'll let you know about online on Niagara 411 uh, for, uh, for advertising, for sponsorship. And this show just keeps, get bigger, uh, keeps getting bigger, bigger and better. And the numbers are going through the roof. So we're going to take a step back, actually, because and, and, we're not sure how big this thing gets. And, uh, but we'll definitely be back in, in touch with you. To Fiddler's Poorhouse, thank you very much for hosting us as per usual. Gail's Gas Bars, uh, you're all stars. Verge Insurance Group, um, two thumbs up for everything you do for us. And uh, my name is Lee Sterry of Lee Sterry Voice Services. Um, anything you need that needs a voice, that's me. And uh, I guess the only way I can say uh, goodbye is farewell and we'll be back in a, in a few weeks is to say, please enjoy Momentum Choir and don't stop. Enjoy the rest of your week, everybody. Thank you for being here. Just a little while Under your eyes Look at the day You'll see things In a different way Don't stop Thinking about tomorrow Don't stop And you'll soon be here You'll be here Better than before Yesterday's gone Yesterday's gone Think about times to come And not about the things that you've done If your life was bad to you Just think what tomorrow will do Don't stop thinking about tomorrow Don't stop, you'll soon be here You'll be here better than before Yesterday's gone, yesterday's gone What I want is to see you smile If it takes just a little while I really don't believe that it's true Ooh.
Yeah! I did it!